Hello everyone, it's your buddy Nancy. I am so very delighted to be speaking with you today. On the last video I posted, somebody made a request for me to do a video about burnout. And somewhat ironically, I then was too burnt out to post for a month. As you know, if you've been following my YouTube channel or just my social media, I've been going through some health stuff, which is still ongoing, and I've been preserving my time and mental capacity, uh, but I'm in a somewhat good place and wanting to make some more content for you guys. So let's talk about burnout. The first thing I wanna say is I know that some of my suggestions here are going to be investing money in stuff, not a ton, Still, I think some of what leads to burnout is financial instability. I don't really know what to say about that. That, that is what it is. That's the trade-off. We live in a capitalist society. That's a whole other discussion. Uh, so I wanted to put that up front and also say I'm not a mental health expert and I know that what works for me won't work for everyone. The last thing I want to point out before we get into this is like, it is right and fine and okay and very understandable to be feeling burned out right now. Everyone I know, campaign person, lawyer, dentist, whatever, is feeling stressed because this is a stressful time in our country. Add to that the kind of work that we all do that can be very emotionally taxing, feeling like the weight of the world or at least the weight of democracy is on our shoulders, and of course you're feeling burned out. So I want to validate those feelings and let you know that I'm right there with you. And I think that talking about it as a community is something that's really helpful and healthy when we talk about ways to take care of ourselves and each other and not when we sort of fetishize this burnout culture. With all those disclaimers, let's talk about some things that I try to do to care for myself on campaigns to try to mitigate the effects of burnout. The first thing is I really like controlling my space, whether that's working from home or having an office. So I don't know, I think you can see behind me, I have candles. I love a good scented candle. Now, sometimes you'll have people in your office who are allergic to scented candles and you can't use those, but I think it's a really lovely way in a lot of cases to sort of own your space and personalize it and make it a little bit more comforting because scent memory is such a thing. It's so evocative. Uh, so that's one way that I sort of claim the space I'm working from for myself and help me sort of feel like I'm in control of the space around me. Another thing that's an investment that I absolutely recommend is either getting a space heater or a fan or whatever you need to climate control the space that you're working in. You're not gonna be productive if you're physically uncomfortable. And feeling comfortable and feeling like you have those little creature comforts really allows you to do your best work. So on top of that, other stuff that I would splurge on for a campaign office, is good coffee and a French press or whatever kind of coffee maker you like. You can see I've got my iced coffee right here with me, um, a microwave or a mini fridge, anything that's gonna let you have creature comforts so that you are comfortable in your body and able to focus and be productive. And I know that that sounds really simple, but I think especially starting out like as field organizers, we have this ethos of being scrappy and of denying ourselves things or making stuff work. But I actually think the preparation that we put in ahead of time to pay for stuff to make ourselves comfortable pays off dividends and is a smart and productive use of resources. Along with that, paying for stuff that you're not gonna be able to do yourself. So Instacart to get someone to shop for healthy groceries for you. If you are living in an apartment that's not supporter housing, maybe paying once or twice to have someone come and clean it. Uh, if you're not having time to do laundry, dropping off your laundry at a wash and fold. Again, the stuff seems kind of like bougie and superfluous, but what it really is, is maintaining your energy so that you can use it to your highest and best purpose or so that you can pour into the job. So not being stressed out about the other stuff in my life allows me to feel less stressed out in my work. Oh, another thing is to invest in high quality sheets and bedding and pillows. Now, this doesn't mean you have to get million thread count fancy hotel sheets. What it does mean is be sleeping somewhere comfortable. If you are not resting well, you are not performing well, and you're gonna feel more stressed, you're gonna feel that burnout worse. 
So again, I know we have this policy of being scrappy. Oh, I just rented an apartment and I'm sleeping on an air mattress. Take half a day, put yourself together, get a cheap bed frame, you know, buy something off Craigslist. Is that still a thing? Do people buy things off Craigslist? But figure out a way so that the spaces that you're in are comfortable and that you can be resting appropriately. That segues into something none of you will be surprised to hear me say, which is it's so important to hydrate and drink water. Water has such a big effect on your mood and it's just really easy to forget when you're drilling down and doing your work. But oftentimes I find myself exhausted pounding and pounding coffee, which can dehydrate me. Well, what I really need is water. If you're feeling especially dehydrated and you don't wanna drink a sugary drink like Gatorade or soda, some water with a little bit of salt and lemon juice works really well to restore electrolytes and hydration. I know this has become like a little bit of a trope on campaign Twitter to drink water, but some things are a trope for a reason. Take care of yourself. Another tropey thing, it's annoying, but it is so good for your mental health to get a little bit of exercise. I've been sick, as I mentioned, I haven't really been able to get in the exercise that I usually do. And I can tell you, it has taken a toll on me mentally. Now, in the middle of the campaign season, are you going to be able to take an hour to go to the gym every day to work out really hard? Ideally, yes, if that's something that you enjoy doing, but maybe not. But do take some time to go for a couple walks around the block. Just stretch your legs, do 15 minutes of yoga, maybe as a break with your office mates. Anything to sort of get your blood pumping and be in your body a little bit more. And I wanna say now is not a time, unless you feel like it is, but now doesn't have to be a time for you to institute a rigorous workout routine. This is more just about reminding yourself that you are a complete person away from your desk and to get a little bit of those exercise endorphins going. This is why my preferred mode of exercise is making sure I get in my 10,000 steps every day because this also forces me to go outside. Just not sitting in front of a computer for a little bit, taking in the fresh air, observing sights and sounds can be so beneficial and really helps me feel reconnected to the immediate world around me. Whereas if I am on my computer all day, I'm working and then I'm doom scrolling and we're all on social media talking about everything that's going on. So this sort of separation from my workspace really helps me maintain and restore when I'm starting to feel burned out. I also really suggest having someone outside of your campaign or your job who gets it, by which I mean a friend who is on another campaign or a friend who used to do this kind of work that when you need to vent, you can just call up and vent to. There are many facets to having a spouse who also does this kind of work, some great, some frustrating, but one of the things that's great about it is if I call my husband and say, oh my gosh, my candidate wants to invest a bunch of money in yard signs. I don't need to unpack that for him. I can just call him. I don't need to unpack that for him. I can just tell him that and immediately he understands what I'm talking about. So it's nice to have someone who you can vent to about the work, but who's not invested right in that campaign or right in that context that you're working in. Another thing is to have a hobby outside of work, which I know when you're working on a campaign, it's like you eat, sleep and breathe that. But it's really important to just have something else you can escape into, even if it's only for a few minutes a week. Uh, so some things that I love to do, I follow Washington Nationals baseball. I'm sure you've seen me tweet about. I either go to games in person when I'm in DC or on the road. I would make sure to set aside time to watch the games or even put them in the background. I love to bake, so taking some time to bake cookies and bring those and share those with my office mates is great. And then of course, I have this wonderful social media presence, which although wrapped up in the campaign world has been a really great and fun creative outlet for me. Having that stuff outside of work, just a little bit to pour into, uh, can be really restorative, i found. The last thing I would say is have something to look forward to. If you're in a campaign, it can be really soul numbing to be like, okay, I'm pushing through this, I'm pushing through GOTV, and then I'm gonna be unemployed and I don't know what's coming next. So for me, it's almost like when you buy a lottery ticket and then you fantasize about, oh, this is how I'm gonna spend my money when I win the lottery. I like to think after a campaign, like, okay, we're gonna go on this really fun trip. We're gonna drive up Pacific Coast Highway in California after this. Have something to be looking forward to that you can be planning for and excited about that's completely independent of election day. 
I think a lot of these tips really have to do with maintaining your personhood outside of the work. And I think that's one really important thing to come away with is you are not the job. You take the work seriously, but don't take yourself so seriously that you're making yourself miserable. And I think when we can't separate ourselves from the work and it becomes our identity, that can really lead to burnout because that's all there is. And we're living and dying by every meeting, every poll, every fundraiser. And so if I have a couple takeaways from this, it would be number one, make sure that you are working in comfortable spaces and don't feel guilty about doing things to take care of your comfort and physical body. Number two, don't feel guilty about outsourcing stuff that you can't take care of right now. Make sure to put your bills on auto pay. Pay someone to clean up the office once in a while. Focus your effort and energy on the things that need you personally to do them. And then third of all, I don't know where I first learned this expression, but I think about it a lot in terms of campaigns. You can't pour from an empty cup. So taking time to physically and emotionally take care of yourself is not only good for your mental well-being, it ultimately makes you better and more productive at your job because you can bring a more aware, a more balanced, a more focused person into work. I really hope this helps. Please take care of yourselves and each other and let me know what else you want to hear about down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.